Hey, good morning, Parkview Baptist Church. It's uh, Mike, and it is Tuesday morning, uh, December the 29th, and 2020 is almost uh, fully in our rearview mirror after a couple more days. Uh, hopefully, you still have uh, some good family time and maybe some off time from work that you can enjoy uh, this week. I needed to bring you a an update today. There are several announcements, uh, and then just a quick word of encouragement at the end. Uh, and these announcements are just some things that I really think you need to be reminded of uh, and know uh, of again or for the first time. Uh, number one, uh, I'll try to get through these things very quickly. Uh, a couple of folks have come by this week and have called about year-end contributions. If uh, you are seeking to make any other financial contributions to the church that you want recorded in the year of 2020, you need to have those here at the church by 8.30, 8 .30 Thursday morning. Uh, because the final deposit will be made then, but uh, they will be making another deposit. And so some folks have asked, and uh, since you've asked, uh, you can come by the church office. You can see either Gwen or Sheila. Uh, and again, that will be made Thursday morning. So Thursday morning, 8.30 really is the deadline for that before uh, the final deposit will be made uh, later on that morning. Also in the world of finances, if you have not yet uh, been able to give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, uh, we are still going to take uh, a few more days into January uh, to collect that. Uh, it's very important. That is a, one of the great associations we have with the Southern Baptist Convention in that we are able to partner with missionaries literally around the world. So much of, uh, of our cooperative dollars, as we call them, go to the mission field already. But at this particular time of the year at Christmas, every dollar we take up in the Lottie Moon Christmas offering goes straight to the mission field uh, around the world. So if you've not yet given, or if you've thought about giving, giving uh, having given some more, then uh, I encourage you to do that, whether you do that by the year end or uh, next week, uh, any of that will uh, be fine. One more financial uh, announcement for you, just in case you missed this, uh, we have failed to vote on our 2021 budget. Uh, and really, that's all on me. On a Sunday, December the 20th, I plumb forgot. We were supposed to have voted. We announced it. And uh, I just uh, sheer forgot the whole thing. And then as uh, conversations went back and forth, when we realized we forgot it, we were going to vote this past Sunday on the 27th. However, one of the things we discovered was that we missed about $3,600 worth of uh, dollars that needed to be in the budget. And so, and especially and specifically in the area of health insurance for some of our staff members. And so we it's a part of their package. And so instead of voting on the 27th on what you had already seen and then coming back to amend that with that in there, we decided to wait and just vote one time by adding that in there. So if you saw the original proposed 2021 budget and you're wondering how different is it, it's really different by $3,600 really in one line item uh, concerning health insurance for your pastoral staff. And so uh, that's really the difference. But we will vote on that this coming Sunday, January the 3rd. And if you want to see the final proposed 2021 budget, we have those available here uh, out on the table just outside uh, of the office so that you can look at it, so that you can ask questions. Uh, you can call uh, Lisa Garrett, our chairman of finance, or uh, Tammy Shelley, our treasurer. You can call me if you want to, but I'll probably direct you to them uh, as they have uh, been leading that uh, for uh, us. A um, couple of things coming up. On Thursday, January the 7th, uh, I really want to meet with so many different people on Thursday, January the 7th. If you are a Sunday school teacher or if you are a leader in any way on our Wednesday night activities, I invite you to come visit with us and meet uh, in the youth center uh, at, uh, at six o'clock. And we're gonna talk about the goals that we have of beginning some things again, like Sunday school, like our Wednesday activities. Uh, and you, I hope you heard a key word in that sentence I just used, and it is our goal, okay? We still uh, are in a very unique time. Uh, the calendar's turning over to 2021 and there's still some new things uh, coming before us with a. Uh, a new inauguration uh, later in the month of January. COVID-19 continues to be a very pressing issue on us. And so we're gonna talk about some necessary things uh, to begin our Sunday school uh, program back, uh, our Wednesday nights uh, as well. 
And again, that remains a goal to start at the end of January, which would be Sunday the 24th and Wednesday the 27th. Uh, I would love to believe that we could meet that goal. If we are unable to, we will obviously discuss that and make the uh, necessary announcements to the church. There's another great announcement I wanna to give to you, especially for our men. So gentlemen, listen up. We have calendared for a men's retreat uh, on March 11th through the 13th. That is going to be a Thursday night through a Saturday lunch. And I want you to put that on your calendar right now, men. Uh, we're going to make, uh, make some personal uh, invitations to you. Uh, you're going to hear from me. You're going to hear from others as this begins to, to go out. And I would like uh, us to go as old as possible. So if you think you're too old for a men's retreat, you come on. If you think you're too young, we're still coming after you as well. We want young men. We want all ages, uh, sizes, and uh, all scopes of men. And so I hope that you'll be a part of that. Ladies, I'm also going to employ your help as well to, to get the men in your life as, uh, to be a part of this. Uh, I really look forward to that. I've been spending a lot of time with uh, the prep for this already, uh, for what we're going to talk about, what we're going to challenge you with. Uh, but uh, you'll get a lot of details very, very soon uh, concerning that. Looking forward to our discipleship group starting back up again Sunday night uh, and uh, all of that. Our prayer partners, I say thank you again for such a, a tremendous end of the year as we began the prayer ministry uh, this fall and into this winter. Uh, some new items are going to be coming your way that you could be praying with me and for me about uh, in uh, the new year. This Friday, January 1st, this Friday, I am going to record a message, and I want to go ahead and tell you about it right now. And I want to just address in, in hopefully some general uh, ways COVID-19 and the church, okay? I really want to just speak from my heart to you as we enter into a new year. It has been uh, a unique year, to say the least, for every single one of us. Um, I, again, no one could have scripted this. And now as we try to script our future... Uh, it's still going to be very difficult uh, to do so with any clarity uh, and any certainty. Uh, but I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about not having clarity and not having certainty because we follow the God of all creation who is all wise, all knowing. He's already seen it. He's already been there. And he is going to give us clarity as we need it. He is going to deliver certainty uh, at just the right time. But I do want to address you. And so look for another recording that's going to come out this Friday, January the 1st. As I just share some of my heart, I'm going to give you just some, some personal address here. There's going to be some challenge in it. And with that, I'd be willing to bet that there may even be some disagreement in that, okay? But listen, we're a church. We love one another. We are family. And uh, just because there might be something in there that you go, wait, wait a minute, Mike, I'm not sure about that. Don't let that keep you from, from visiting with me, talking with me, because we've got to figure out how to navigate the days ahead because things are going to be different. Let me finish up today's, uh, that's a long list of uh, announcements uh, with you, uh, but let me finish up with a quick word from the scripture. God has had me in a couple of places, and I'm going to start in Galatians chapter 6. This is what Paul says to, the, to uh, the Galatians. He says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. I'm willing to bet you anything that there's a lot of weariness uh, in you today, uh, in us, as we have sought to navigate this strange year that we have uh, been a part of. Uh, weariness as we try to do good, uh, serving one another, ministering to one another. And Paul just encourages his church with this. He says, don't grow weary in this. You will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Now, what Paul is not telling us is this. He's not saying go 90 to nothing and never rest. All right? He's not saying just stay on the go, on the go, on the go, on the go. What he is saying is, is don't give up. Because we do need our rest. Whether it's the weekly Sabbath that the Lord gives us to, to recharge through worship and through rest, literally, uh, that, that is a part of our makeup. That's a part of what God knows we need. But just, he says, don't give up. Don't grow weary, even though it gets heavy, even though you think it's so burdensome. It may even mean that you feel like, I don't even feel like we're making any progress, Mike. Listen, don't give up. 
Don't let a stalled engine or whatever it may look like or sound like in the way of a, a, an illustration keep you from continuing to push forward. And then this is what Paul says as well. Um, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. And then he says, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So we need to stay, uh, stay focused on our church. Again, I just say thank you because y'all stay focused on me and our staff so much. Y'all have been so good to do good to us and to do good with us and to provide and to include and invite and, and all these things and just be generous to. And so we're gonna continue that push with Park View Baptist Church because what a wonderful family we have here uh, in Eufaula. Let me share with you one other uh, thing about that uh, in the way of the church that, uh, that I've just been looking at this, uh, this week already. Paul wrote these words. Oftentimes these words are used for weddings, okay? But these words were given by Paul to the church, okay? And this is what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You know this, many of you do, as the love chapter. And again, the context of these words are for the church. Not a wedding now. They, they, they do apply there, but these are for the church, for you and me as we are a family of God together. Paul says this, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing, he says. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love means everything is what Paul is saying. Love supersedes so many things, loving one another. And he goes on and gives us these definitions of love where he says love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. He goes on in verse 6, love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, he goes on, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass Away, And then he just goes on. I'll jump over to verse 13. And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. What great marching orders for us as a church today to remember that above all things, loving one another, demonstrating this kind of love to the world and with each other is our highest priority. Please know I love you. I am excited about the days ahead. Yes, it's filled with uncertainty and yes, there's just not a lot of knowledge and uh, it can be frustrating at times, but you need to know I'm excited for our church. I'm excited for 2021. I believe God is still alive and well. You know that. He's on his throne and he is uh, going to accomplish his work through a faithful people that will remain faithful to him. And I know that you are those kind of people, and that is the body of Christ here at Parkview. So I'm excited. I'm filled with anticipation, great expectation for the days ahead. Um, please, again, review these announcements as you need to. And gentlemen, one last time, the year 2021 is going to be a marker for us. It'll be a year to remember as we rally the troops and begin doing ministry with men as I believe God forever intended it to be done. So li listen to me. I want to pray for you, and I want to say thank you again for being a wonderful church. God, we thank you today for loving us. And Lord, we thank you. I thank you right now personally for Parkview Baptist Church. Lord, I know that even last night as text messages went through uh, many people, and several different groups and different things happening, Father, that, that we are concerned about a lot with our family members and our friends. Uh, Lord, our, our day uh, that includes so much to, that can worry us and concern us. And Lord, I pray for my church today. I pray for those who have family members who serve in the medical community, Lord, that every day go out and willingly, lovingly, with a call upon them to serve humanity in their sickness. Father, would you protect them and bless them? Lord, would you continue to uh, put a covering over your church and protect us from COVID-19 and, Lord, literally from everything else? Lord, we just ask you 
to bless us with health. Lord, I, I, I know that we're not always healthy, and I know we're not always going to be, but Lord, would you bless us, bless our nation, bless our land. Father, there's so many things that, that, uh, that we need to be praying for with the leadership of our country right now. But Father, would you just have your way? Would you fill us with faith and courage and boldness that as we follow you, Lord, we know that we can trust you because you are fully trustworthy and you are fully faithful. And Father, we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do in this next year. Thank you again for your church, Lord. Thank you for creating it. Thank you, Lord, for giving such a great church to each of us today here in you follow called Parkview. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all today. And uh, if you have any questions about any of these announcements, don't hesitate to call me or come by. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at prayer meeting at church. So uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.